I hear this quite a lot, that people have sort of got so far down the line with their composition and they just don't know what to do next. In fact, I had a class at school this morning and I asked them exactly this and there were a lot of heads nodding to say, yes, they've, they've experienced this. And um, so hopefully I'd just like to kind of give you a few ideas just to get the ball rolling again if you have actually got a little bit, a little bit stuck. One of the first things to consider is that actually if you can't develop your musical ideas anymore, maybe they're already quite well developed. And actually at that point, maybe one of the things you need to do is to take it back a little bit, to simplify it, to sort of break down little bits. And perhaps in the early stages of your composition, actually it needs to just be a little bit simpler, to allow space for it actually to develop later on. And I'll have a look at how to do those bits in a moment. But you need to always remember that repetition and sequence are the best friends of a composer. If you just take this tune, this Mozart tune. Then what he does next is exactly the same thing. And then we have this. Same thing again. And then we're back to the original tune. And I might change the harmony underneath, but actually it's the same, it's the same tune that we come back to at the very end. If you've already exhausted sequence and repetition, you've got as far as you can with that. Well, what else can you do? Well, one idea that you might take is just to start to examine your musical material you've come up with so far. So if we just take that Mozart tune, for instance. And I try and work out what the smallest little bit of musical material I can play and still recognise what it is. It's probably this. Anything less doesn't quite give us enough information to identify it. And then I start to think about what the properties of that are. So I've got two notes, and this one, and they're a fifth apart, and each one is repeated twice. And so straight away that's starting to give me some ideas about what I might do to extend and develop. So the idea of development really is about connecting your musical material and extending it at the same time. And of course, sequence and repetition that we've mentioned can do that. But of course, if you use it too much, then it can, um, it can be a bit unhelpful as well. So if I take these, then what happens if I add a third repetition instead of just twice? Then suddenly that's starting to turn into something that might have a different meter. Or what if I do four now? And so already I'm starting to change the way those notes are, are, in, are relating to each other. What about now if I start to do the same thing I just did, but introduce a different rhythm? And as soon as I start playing that, Actually, in your head, there's, a, there's another idea for a different type of character that that really actually now kind of possesses. And perhaps the kind of um, accompaniment that goes with it can be a bit more strident to match that. What if I now change the meter so it's in an irregular meter? That can take it on a, a different thing altogether. So if I take it five now, So once I've done that in 5-4, or 5-8, as that was, I might actually decide that instead of... I kind of want to take one step back from this melody and make it a little less recognisable 
And so I'm going to swap some notes around. Instead of this one, I'm maybe going to go... Just a very simple swap, and I'm just going to see what happens. So... And I'm just sort of repeating it there. Uh, and actually, I wonder how many more times I could repeat it without it kind of getting dull. And don't forget that there are also three things that you can do to prevent repetition from getting dull really easily. And one is just changing the, the dynamic. So... articulation or the register and I might want to change the order again And of course, at that point, this actually starts to sound a little bit like a background sort of idea. So what if I now do this? all into the into the piano's left hand and of course the thing is you can do all of these things in combination with uh, with each other as well and one of the final tricks you can use is to take to go back to the original tune and of course we're used to hearing those notes one after the other but what happens if we put them all together and of course the next bit is and what happens if I now go like that and put those on top of each other like this. Then straight away we've got a different idea to work with here. That's still connected. And all I need to do is find some maybe other notes. And maybe that can form a background. Again, I'm using the same techniques here in the right hand, just using a lot of sequence, and, well, repetition in this case, before finally heading off into a different chordal area and probably doing the same thing uh, all over again. So not all of these things will work first time, and they won't always produce musical results, but they might just be able to get you unblocked if you're having a bit of a, a creative block.